Paleoanthropologists generally believe that Homo sapiens left Africa via three different possible routes. All could have been used in different ways, some of which became permanent and are still in use today. The first is the southern route, which runs from Ethiopia to Yemen via the Red Sea. The second and most popular hypothesis, known as the northern route, goes through Egypt, then onto the Sinai Peninsula and into the eastern Mediterranean Sea. The last and least popular hypothesis is the northwestern route across the Strait of Gibraltar to the Iberian Peninsula. There may also have been a split or multiple genesis of Homo sapiens in Africa, with each group developing their own culture, technologies, and physical characteristics. As a result, migrations out of Africa via any route are more complicated than they appear. Thus, we must consider multiple migrations in both directions over tens of thousands of years. Nonetheless, between 100,000 and 300,000 years ago, one ancient group of humans split from others in the human genus, giving rise to the modern human lineage. To explain these findings, the researchers proposed a weakly structured stem model, with gene flow between ancestral human populations in Africa over hundreds of thousands of years. Another idea proposes that this central ancestral population did not emerge in isolation, but rather as a result of hundreds of thousands of years of mixing between modern humans and Neanderthal-like hominins. Decades of human genetic variation research reveal that the traditional, tree-like, concept of recent population divergence is correct. The fossil data, on the other hand, shows otherwise. Those who believed in the conventional hypothesis of Homo sapiens' unique origin, argued that humans initially appeared in either eastern or southern Africa at different dates. These views, however, have been difficult to reconcile with the limited fossil and archaeological evidence of human occupancy from locations as far away as Morocco, Ethiopia, and South Africa, which demonstrate that early Homo sapiens were found living across the region as long as 300,000 years ago. The researchers used contemporary genomic information from 290 individuals, from four geographically and genetically different African populations, to undertake the first systematic evaluation of rival hypotheses of modern human evolution. After that, the researchers ran hundreds of scenarios through an algorithm. Those involving gene flow across groups throughout the continent over hundreds of thousands of years, provided a far better explanation for the genetic variety we see today. By tracing the similarities and differences contained in the genomes of the tribes over the past million years, scientists were able to get insight into the genetic links across the continent. Some Eurasian genetic material was also introduced to erase the evidence of colonial intrusions and mixing in Africa. The division of the world into great continents, in whatever form it takes on maps, has become an increasingly important geographical concept. With the triumph of European imperialism, the contemporary European view of the world's divisions gained near-universal acceptance. The authors of The Myth of Continents contend that the world should be divided into world regions rather than continents. These regions have significant implications for human evolution because humans did not have concepts of continents in the distant past. The Near East is one such important world region, connecting Europe, Africa, and Asia, and is an important region for the genesis of our subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens. Historically, Africa referred to ancient Libya in Greco-Roman geography, but the term was later expanded to refer to the larger landmass. However, if you believe geography is an objective science, you need to reconsider. Despite the continental scheme's implicit European bias, and the questionable and dubious division of the Old World into Europe, Asia, and Africa, such parts of the Earth were not necessarily defined explicitly as continents prior to relatively recently. The division of the Old World into a single continent forces one to recognize that Europe, Asia, and Africa are not truly separated. Indeed, this division has long perplexed geographers. In fact, if continents are strictly defined as discrete landmasses encompassing all of a body's contiguous land, then Africa, Asia and Europe form a single continent known as Afro-Eurasia. Indeed, we need to move beyond the limiting and artificial concept of continents to have a better understanding of human evolution. Recognizing Homo sapiens' true geographic heritage not only enhances our understanding of human evolution, but also promotes a more inclusive perception of our ancestral heritage. In fact, ancient DNA has assisted scientists in reconstructing evolution and adaptation among Eurasia's humans, over the course of 30,000 years. 
a new study on on ancient DNA has proposed a new model for human evolution, known as the Arabia Standstill Model. The long period of evolution, which began around 85,000 years ago, would have helped humans adapt to changing climatic conditions, allowing them to leave the Near East and migrate to colder climes in Asia and Europe. That's what researchers call the Arabia standstill, when Homo sapiens just camped out in Arabia, obviously not in a planned manner, and expanded from there when it became advantageous or possible. And this process extremely slow, we're talking about 30,000 years. Humans have far more evidence of extremely strong adaptive evolution than previously thought. Scientists' analysis of thousands of ancient genomic samples shed light on the Arabian standstill, a period of stalled human movement. This adaptive evolution appears to be a response to both the arrival of humans in new locations and natural climate changes. Because most modern humans carry genetic evidence of a shared evolutionary event, this points to a brief adaptation that occurred before groups left the Near East and spread across the globe. Humans stagnated in the general vicinity of the Near East, possibly around the Gulf of Oman, for a long time before adapting to colder climates. Then, somewhere around modern-day Iraq, they mated with the Neanderthals and moved into the colder regions of Eurasia. Certain genes have also been related to species-specific adaptations. Those that code for the production of cilia, microscopic hairy projections on cells that maintain lung health in cold and dry circumstances, were found to be overrepresented in evolutionary events shared by humans and other species like Arctic foxes and polar bears. Scientists can deduce from this data that cold adaptation is the key cause. The gene targets are then linked to their biological function. Increased availability of ancient DNA is increasingly influencing evolutionary research, which can start to discover sites on the human genome that may have been highly conserved through tens of thousands of years, as well as those that may have shown signals of abrupt, adaptive alterations among specific groups. In fact, scientists can learn more about which sections of the genome conduct specific activities, by tying long-term genetic alterations to unique features. The human genome, with its 3 billion base pairs, 19,000 to 20,000 genes, and a few other things in between, provides a massive barrier to genetic study. Early Neanderthal and Homo sapiens interbreeding most likely occurred in the Levant, according to paleogenetic evidence. We don't know if these sexual encounters were long-term relationships or short-term hookups, and we don't know what the various groups thought of each other. In any case, these were two viable and fertile populations with no reproductive separation between them. According to researchers, Neanderthals would have looked different from Homo sapiens, but not significantly so. Neanderthals had a short and stocky build, an arched brow, and protruding jawbones. However, their appearance was not so shocking that they never interacted with modern humans. Because Neanderthals and Homo sapiens interbred in the Levant, Neanderthals likely adopted some of the immune system defenses that would protect them longer than in other parts of the world. Meanwhile, we've long assumed that Homo sapiens outlasted Neanderthals due to our superior intelligence. Modern humans essentially appeared on the scene around 100,000 years ago, quickly dominated, and began our reign at the top of the food chain. Modern humans are said to have pushed Neanderthals to extinction, which is why we exist today. However, archaeologists believe that this arrogant, simplified version of our human origins is likely false. Based on the rich Stone Age archaeology of the Levant, which today encompasses the Mediterranean shores of the Near East, experts in this field point to a much cloudier view of our evolutionary past. This temperate mix of coastal plain and hill country was most likely home to a mingling of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, who coexisted for more than 100,000 years. Anthropologists believe there was no significant barrier separating these two groups in the Levant. Small groups of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals were most likely constantly moving in and out of the area, coexisting. They were both populations that hunted and gathered. Neanderthals returned to Europe, where they first evolved, and Homo sapiens returned to Africa for the same reason. However, it was unlikely that when one group passes through, the other would leave during natural climate change events. It's not like they were playing musical chairs, with one group coming in and the other leaving. When they were in the Levant, these groups most likely had separate territories but came into contact with each other on occasion. This prehistoric gathering spot was not by chance. 
both groups ended up in the Levant because it was a desirable location that connected Africa and Asia. Its mild climate produced an abundance of flora and fauna for feasting. The research does not establish whether these communities coexisted at any point in time. Nonetheless, when fossils from Neanderthal archaeological dig sites and Homo sapiens dig sites are compared, the dating is similar, implying that the groups coexisted. Furthermore, each group's material culture is indistinguishable, they appeared to use similar tools and burial customs. Both used spear-like weapons to hunt and ate deer, gazelles, pigs, and wild cows. So unless you find a fossil specimen next to a weapon or tool, it's difficult to tell which material culture belonged to which group. Homo sapiens and Neanderthals coexisted for thousands of years before the latter became extinct. But it wasn't due to a lack of intelligence. The material cultures were far too similar to be the result of intelligent design of modern humans. Whatever caused their demise, these two analogous populations most likely coexisted for 100,000 years or more before splitting up. And because they interbred, humans, including those in Africa, are still a little bit Neanderthal. Check out our channel for more F informative videos as we continue to explore the mysteries of our past. Until then, remember to embrace the uniqueness of our shared human heritage. Thank you for watching.